Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucians urged to finalize preparations for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season, which begins 1st of June. The SLHTA says amendments to the COVID-19 protocols will have a positive economic impact on thousands of displaced inclusions. And more than a dozen students and teachers earn the right to read. St. Lucians have been called upon to finalize preparations for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Tuesday, 1st June marks the official start to the hurricane season. However, the region did see the formation of Tropical Storm Anna on the 22nd of May. Anna, a subtropical cyclone, was short-lived and posed no threat to life nor property. Director of the St. Lucia Met Services, Andre Joye, says this hurricane season will be above normal. He says this is the sixth consecutive year that forecasters are predicting above normal activity. The Colorado State University, in their 20, April 2021 forecast, anticipate that there will be 17 named storms, of which eight will develop into hurricanes, with four attaining major hurricane status. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Agency, predicts a 70% probability of above normal cyclone activity this year. They are expecting the formation of 13 to 20 named storms, of which 6 to 10 will become hurricanes, including 3 to 5 major hurricanes. The tropical storm risk out of the United Kingdom has predictions for 18 named storms, 9 of which will attain hurricane strength, and four of them will become major hurricanes. Mr. Joye is urging the public to have in place disaster management plans at the household level as well as the business level. While St. Lucia traditionally experiences heightened cyclone activity between the months of September to November, Mr. Joye reminds that rain events can occur at any time. We encourage you to consistently follow regional weather developments and to pay particular attention to local weather reports, advisories, and bulletins issued by the St. Lucia Met Services. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, will also be issuing important directives and information which you are strongly advised to heed. Pre-season rainfall over St. Lucia this year has generally been near normal, and this trend is likely to continue into July. Rainfall thereafter is expected to be normal to above normal. In spite of this prediction, note that heavy rainfall episodes are an expected feature of our rainy season and the occurrence of flooding and landslides remain a major concern. The hurricane season officially ends November 30. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastny on Friday 28th May 2021 announced that Cabinet on the advice of the Chief Medical Officer had approved amendments to the COVID-19 prevention and control regulations effective 31st May 2021 to 30th June 2021. Among the adjusted measures is the lifting of quarantine for returning nationals and visitors who present a negative PCR test and are fully vaccinated. However, random testing will be done at all arrival points. Notwithstanding the relaxation of measures, Honorable Shastny said St. Lucia is still at a critical point in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic. And as such, government anticipates the risks involved and will continue to strengthen the public health system. The Prime Minister also emphasized the need for St. Lucians to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Vaccination, he noted, reduces the risk of severe illness and transmission. Nevertheless, everyone, including fully vaccinated persons, must continue to wear their mask, social distance and sanitize. It is even more important that everybody in our communities continues to adhere to the current set of protocols. But at the same time, we're hoping that many more St. Lucians are going to be encouraged now that they're seeing the number of people who have been vaccinated globally. And even here in St. Lucia, over 27,000 people have already been vaccinated. Over 18,000 people have already received their second dose to encourage many more St. Lucians to become vaccinated. Having a large percentage of the population fully vaccinated, Honorable Shastny added, will enable the country to fully open its economy. St. Lucia. Many St. Lucians have suffered because of COVID-19. 
And while the government has done everything we can to mitigate against the fallout, it was impossible to eliminate it. So today's announcement allows many of those small businesses that have been affected, the car rental businesses, small guest houses, Airbnb, bars and restaurants to reopen. But we need to do this safely because as quickly as we've opened up our economy, if in fact we see an increase in cases, as you know, it would cause the government to have to reverse some of our protocols again. So we're all in this together. We can do this. We must do this. And I'm asking you one more time, all of us, despite some of the hesitation that we have, in order to move on and get back to some level of normalcy, to give many solutions the opportunity to take care of themselves and their families, please get vaccinated. 46,771 St. Lucians have received the AstraZeneca vaccine. 28,118 individuals have received the first dose of the vaccine and 18,653 individuals have received the second dose. And the national vaccination drive continues this week. The sites are as follows. Tuesday, June 1, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds and Philip Maslake Grounds. Wednesday, June 2, VG Sports Complex and Denry Mothers Preschool. Friday, June 4, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, Jack Bell Wellness Center and VG Sports Complex. Meanwhile, the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, SLHTA, has welcomed the amendments to the COVID-19 protocols. The SLHTA believes these amendments will have a positive economic impact on the lives of the thousands of people who have been displaced within the sector since the COVID-19 pandemic began last year. The SLHTA recognizes that these amendments to the protocols are critical as they convey excellent news to small and medium enterprises which can now come back on the stream after suffering a tremendous economic blow. While the science is informing the decisions, the SLHTA maintains that all nationals have a responsibility to ensure compliance with the safety protocols and avail themselves of the vaccines. The SLHTA also indicated that it appreciated the quality of engagement between the association and the various government agencies that predated these amendments. President Paul Colimo says relaxing the protocols positions the island to benefit from the windfall of opportunities as the global economy gradually reopens and further reduce the high unemployment caused by COVID-19. Still with COVID-19 developments, this time assistance for impacted individuals under the UN Women and Gender COVID-19 Response Subvention Project. Under the Engender, Enabling Gender Responsive Disaster Recovery, Climate and Environmental Resilience in the Caribbean Project, Global Affairs Canada has repurposed funds to support a COVID-19 response through UN Women Multi-Country Office in the form of small grants for the tourism and agriculture sectors. Persons in these sectors have been negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and the funds will be offered as a source of relief. This aligns with the Engender Project's mandate as it seeks to further integrate gender equality and human rights-based approaches into disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation, environmental management frameworks and interventions, as well as identifying and addressing some of the gaps to ensure equal access to disaster risk reduction, climate change and environment solutions for men, women, boys and girls in nine countries, including St. Lucia. Jani Joseph is the Director of Gender Relations in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development. None of us, especially those of us whose incomes were not impacted by the pandemic, can fully comprehend what the women whose livelihoods were lost to the COVID pandemic are really experiencing. This initiative only provides a small response to a very deep problem we know that, but we are very grateful to UN Women for their support in this initiative and their support generally to us in St. Lucia. We are grateful to the project management unit of the Engender Project for their unwavering support. But we are eternally grateful to the Government of Canada 
for their support at this our lowest point. We hope that this small gesture of support, of which you will hear more about during the ceremony, will go a long way towards providing relief to the 110 recipients in this most challenging time. Given that in St. Lucia, a large majority of jobs and livelihoods are within the agriculture and tourism sectors, many farmers have suffered significant losses during the global lockdown due to the stay-at-home orders and the inability to sell produce to the hotels. Chief Extension Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, Physical Planning and Cooperatives, Comuel Jean-Baptiste, expressed gratitude for the initiative. But purchasing power is still down. And so these vendors at the street markets, they continue to contend. They head out with this primary produce. And sometimes 50% is sold, 20%, there's no telling. And so we see that this COVID-19 has had some severe impact, but not just on the vendors. We have the agro-processors. They're involved in producing condiments. They're involved in producing an assortment of products. But because purchasing power is, is highly reduced, we see that there is a reduction in the earnings for these women. And so the Department of Agriculture is really thankful that the Engender the Project and United Nations Women have taken the decision to provide support to those vulnerable populations. The travel restrictions affected accommodations, restaurants, local craft vendors, souvenir shops, taxi drivers, tours and other activities frequented by locals as well as international tourists. Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries Tourism and Research Officer Tussell Lewis explained that thousands of employees in the tourism sector were negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And again, this program is very important. We see that a lot of women have been disadvantaged during this pandemic. We know that a lot of other work is coming up. We have a lot of construction happening on island. However, we know that it's mostly men who are usually employed within that field. So it's very difficult. We have a lot of women in terms of their skill set for these persons to be re-employed. So this, this program really is, is going to be beneficial to them. So on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism and its operators, we would like to say a heartfelt thank you to the Department of Gender Relations for the introduction and the successful rollout of the UN Women and Gender COVID-19 response program. The assistance you have provided here is extremely crucial to these women who depend on the sector in these uncertain times. 60 women craft vendors and tour guides across St. Lucia will receive support in the form of cash grants and food vouchers for two consecutive months. 50 small rural female farmers will be receiving financial support towards purchasing farming equipment. Each recipient will be receiving a voucher valid for one month from the date of issue to redeem at any of the four local farming equipment stores which were pre-selected by the Ministry of Agriculture. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The thrust to inculcate a culture and love for reading amongst the nation's students received a shot in the arm with the publication of writings by students and teachers as part of the OECS US Aid Early Learners Program's Right to Read initiative. Hermody Mark has that story. The OECS USAID Early Learners Program celebrated a significant accomplishment with the culmination of the Right to Read program. The program was established in 2017 and provided students and teachers across the OECS the opportunity to become authors of books using the region's early childhood curriculum. After a rigorous process of collection and evaluation of submissions, winners were announced and their submissions were published. The St. Lucia Early Learners Program of the Department of Education held a book launch on May 28, 2021, where the student and teacher offers from St. Lucia were recognized and provided with copies of their books. Angel Caglin, the Curriculum Officer of English at Camdu, says... This is the beginning of localizing the literature used in schools. Really, we want to look at this as a first step to having more locally authored texts in the classroom, in our classroom libraries, in our school libraries, and in our instructional curriculum. So for anyone listening to this program, whether it is today or tomorrow or sometime in the future, consider this the opening ceremony 
for more publications authored by our students, by our teachers, and by our community members. 18 books were displayed, written by 19 students and teachers. The books were published by Caribbean Reads and covered a variety of genres. By providing locally made reading resources, the initiative aimed to create an authentic reading experience for students at the OECS and increase their love for reading. Rafa Gordon is the education specialist in the Education Development Management Unit of the OECS. We recognize that we're putting so much emphasis on buying books from the outside to have children to read. And I know from being a former teacher and working with the Ministry of Education, working with teachers directly, that we have so much talent out there. We have teachers who are superb writers. We have students who are superb writers. And I remember some of my students when I taught at this Iris Simmons Secondary School, uh, students that Persons may underestimate, may assume are not necessarily the most capable. And I think back to some of the writings that I got from some of those students and we realized that rather than putting all the emphasis on getting commercial material that is being produced by people who are, for the most part, outside of the region, we need to celebrate our own. Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, encouraged the student offers to celebrate their successes. She expressed gratitude to the agencies involved in the initiative and commended them for their dedication to improving education in the region. We cannot leave without me, on behalf of the Department of Education, extending my sincerest gratitude to USAID, UNICEF, OECS, a partner who is family to us, always there with us, as we continue to forge ahead, for me, always with the most significance of children. Education must be about children. What else? And sometimes it's really the adults that take the forefront, but we must focus on them. So let me say to you, to everyone here, a job well done. The book launch coincided with Reading Month 2021, which was held under the theme Readers as Creators. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hermity Mark, reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça ou ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bassin de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou kachiwe pan. Si toilette bol ou kakole, ou ni pour mettre ten en di de bac la. Toilette bol la, kakole, si ou kawe koule à de bol la avant ou flush li. Un toilette bol qui kakole, ka gaspille un chai glo. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver motoka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de l'eau ou sien pour vous effleurer. Ou. Le ou sauver de l'eau, ou ka baisser manière, ou ka servi tepe en main. Sauver de l'eau, tout le ou ni en chance. Et changer tout de l'eau est content. Ça c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Quayol. Monsieur Tan Janel, Monsieur Madame Department qui est responsable pour information à gouvernement cette fois-ci. Ça c'est GIS, ça c'est la télévision nationale pays NTN. Quand vous êtes au Nouvelle à Quayol, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette fois-ci, j'ai approuvé cet amendement, un ben changement qui a gouverné façon pour régler, empêcher et contrôler la maladie de corona à pays. Commencé depuis le 30 à mois de mai pour le 31 à mois de juin l'année 2021, concept ci a continué pour renforcer le programme de la vaccine et aussi après un pile de libération à sous euh, recommandations qui sorti par sept qui est responsable pour guider l'opération des affaires COVID à cette ci ça nous connaît comme Command Center, avec le ministre des cabinets de gouvernement, cette ci Il est d'accord pour faire cet arrangement pour ces protocoles, -là, pour faire possible pour les gens qui ont trouvé tous les doses de la vaccine, pour trouver plus les chats libres après ça. Mais le public-là, nous pouvons comprendre 
exprime toutes ses principes pour cette république conserver masse à ce fidjaï à public la distance sociale laver la main et sanitize parce que ça peut pas changer et avec qu'on fioua c'est même qu'on avance ça c'est never soit pour quatre les bons matins à ces changements neuf là il y a un monde qui ne licence pour vendre liquide ça veut dire divers boissons pe permit il y a une personne pour entrer et boire à ce n'est pas de 11 bon matin pour juste 8 heures soir activité sport en face aux compétitions peut faite à des facilités qui a bas bon contrôle et puis public là ça assisté mais ça ne peut faire seulement à bas condition côté toutes ces monde qui là pour assister à activité à j'ai trouvé dose la vaccine yo toute activité sport et l'autre activité publique qui ne peut trouver ça ne peut trouver à prouver par ministère de santé les citoyens c'est ici et les étrangers qui ca retourner à pays là qui n'y ont test PCR qui négatif et que j'ai trouvé toute dose la vaccine pas qu'il n'y besoin pour entrer en quarantaine ministère de santé ca aussi fait assurer qui monde qui ca débattre trouver testé malgré ça chef officier médical ni pouvoir pour placer n'importe étranger qui ca visiter en quarantaine pour protéger santé publique à cette ci pièce activité sociale qui pas ni plus qui 50 monde ca trouvé permission après autorisation ministère de santé gouvernement cette ci ni as pas qui ce changement ça là ca fait possible pour ces divers secteurs qui étaient trouvés affectés sérieusement par corona pour commencer opération encore et aussi agrandir à son service pendant pays a ca continuer pour veiller façon qui maladie ça là ca se mange et pour tout le monde pour toute précaution qui est nécessaire pour protéger quoi la famille examen pour réduire capacité malade de corona pour passer manger ministère de santé qui a informé public là en cette ci qui continuation programme la vaccine commencé le 31 en mois de mai 2021 et qui est service pour juste vendredi le 4e en mois de juin 2021 programme la vaccine ça là c'est pour public là généralement commencé en l'âge 18 ans et plus haut en plus haut l'âge ça c'est pour trouver première dose là et aussi yo qui kai point deuxième dose là yo commandé pour les individus qui kai recevoir deuxième dose la vaccine là pour marcher et puis quatre la vaccine là qui nous la te bayo les yo première dose là les peuple ni pour marcher aussi et puis quatre ID national yo pour faciliter service de registration et qui kai nécessaire aussi pour marcher et puis yo qui manger léger et glo comme yo peni pour aspirer pour un petit temps pour trouver vacciné c'est ça pour la vaccine là qui est ouvert depuis 9h le matin pour jusqu'à 4h après-midi les peuples qui ont trouvé encouragement pour servir aussi ces cliniques au Liban cette ci qui yo ça côté yo ça trouver première dose là et aussi deuxième dose de la vaccine là commencé depuis lundi le 31 en mois mai pour jusqu'à vendredi le 4e en mois de juin 2021 lundi ça là qui passe qui est lundi on dit là c'était à l'hôpital Sofia et facilité sport à la vigie mardi c'est ça c'est le 1er juin ça qui est Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds et à ça ça bosse jour Gozile et Philip Marsley Grounds à Vieux-Fort mais que dit le 2e juin qui est en facilité sport à la vigie et Mothers Preschool à Denry vendredi le 4e juin qui est en Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds et en Wellness Center là à Jack Mel et aussi facilité sport à la VG. Compagnie de l'eau, c'est ici, ça c'est Wasco. J'ai commencé pour placer Tio en fait 300 pieds longés à ce pont Bonté pour arriver à Gap Mwanjiro. Compagnie de l'eau Wasco, en collaboration et puis gouvernement, c'est ici. J'ai commencé à faire une initiative, ça c'est réhabilitation en ligne Tio, sorti à ce pont au choc pour entrer au Cap. Pour que ça là, qu'à adresser ces places là, qui plus valables, afin qui plus accessible quoi. Côté, il y a estimé plus que deux pour trois millions gallons de l'eau qu'a perdu par jour. Par conséquent, parce que j'ai commencé à établir à peu près trois cents pieds longés de tuyaux en fait, sorti à ce pont Bonté pour Gap Mandjiro Gosile pour replacer ces vieux tuyaux 14 pouces qui j'ai bail service passer la musique. J'ai estimé qui pour j'ai accueilli pour a plus qui deux mois alors 
Wasco a fait un appel pour la coopération même publique qui a conduit le tour aussi à la pièce de difficulté de mon temps de travail sur la gaffette. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons fait un bout de mesdames. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder, pour vous avoir une invitation. Je ne peux pas encore, si vous concevez la vie, je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle à croire à la présent. Je vous remercie pour vous présenter au général. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.